Welcome to my first Pittsburgh Steelers 2023 NFL Mock Draft. So, the Pittsburgh Steelers season ended quite a long time ago, when they didn't make the playoffs. But, I've been waiting for the NFL offseason to officially begin. And since the Super Bowl ended, here it is. Here's my Mock Draft. So, in the first round, with the 17th pick, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Broderick Jones, offensive tackle out of Georgia. So, Offense tackle, especially left tackle, is one of the Pittsburgh Steelers' biggest needs, and that's exactly what Broderick Jones fills. He fills in that left tackle, weighing, weighing in at 315 pounds, and he's 6 of 4. And athleticism is vital, but NFL tackles need more than that. They need power and strength, and those tools are readily available with Jones. Jones' near elite length and rotational freedom grant him high level power capacity, he's able to torque and hold defenders in place with one arm extensions, and that's huge in the NFL. And upon extending, he can use his length to channel awesome power and his hips to generate additional torque and drive through rotations, setting defenders into the turf. He's one of the most powerful offensive tackles in this year's draft. The way that Jones plays the game with his mindset, his aggressive mindset and powerful technique can lead to success in the NFL. And also, if Jones is not able to fit in at left tackle or tackle in the NFL, there's no reason why he won't be able to play guard. He's just too powerful and too athletic to not be able to fit somewhere. And also, the reason why I picked Broderick Jones, when you look at Georgia, Georgia develops so many good offense tackles, so many defensive tackles, and just offense line and defense line in general. And you just can't miss selecting someone from Georgia of Broderick Jones' strength, athleticism, and power. So, the one thing that I think Jones needs to work on, because I named it, I named all the strengths, but his one weakness is his hand and his landing precision. When you look at where he lands his punches, where he latches on his hands to the defender, sometimes he misses, and sometimes he misses bad. But in the NFL, you need to be able to land that with precision. And obviously, as he develops and he gets into the Pittsburgh Steelers system, there's no reason why he won't be able to improve on that and be able to land his hands in the right spots. So, this first round pick of Broderick Jones, this all depends on if he falls to the Steelers. Because he is a top three offensive tackle in this year's draft. So it demands him falling. Yes, he fits in with the Steelers. This is based off need, but it's also based off how good he is. So, moving on to my second pick. It's still in the first round. The f second pick, number 32 overall, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Jackson Smith Najiba. Me picking Jackson Smith all depends on if he falls in the draft, and he very well could be, because last year he was dealing with an injury for most of the season, so he wasn't able to play basically for the most of the season, and also the stats didn't really look too good. But when you look back in 2021, where he was at Ohio State, he was arguably the best wide receiver on that team, and they were stacked at the position. They had Garrett Wilson, they had Chris Olave, but Jackson Smith was one of the brightest spots on that wide receiver course. And him falling to the Steelers, I know the Steelers don't really need another wide receiver because they have George Pickens and because they have Deontay Johnson and they have Kelvin Austin coming back. But if Jackson Smith falls to them, that could be such a high reward, even though the Steelers don't need wide receiver. Also, one more reason why Jackson Smith could fall to the Steelers in this year's draft is because of his athleticism. He's not really one of the most athletic wide receivers in this year's draft, and he's six feet tall, weighs 198, so that might be a reason why he could fall to the Steelers. So now that I named all the reasons why he could fall, here are the reasons why the Steelers should select him if he does fall to them at pick number 32. He has really good athleticism and acceleration off the line and can use his fast feet to gain speed. Even though he isn't the fastest, as he heads up field, that could really help him. And Smith flashes the capability and capacity for great explosion, especially when he's on the attack. Either surging into space or pursuing blockers, he's fairly easy accelerator 
who generate solid initial momentum and can freely throttle up and down. So he's really good at getting open too. When you just look at his tape, there's always no one near him for miles because he's such a good route runner. And for the Pittsburgh Steelers, the only true really solid route runner on the team right now is Deontay Johnson. So pairing Jackson Smith with Deontay Johnson with George Pickens, big catch ability can be really huge. Yes, Kelvin Austin's coming back, but he's more of a speed guy. It can be used in certain packages, but having Jack Smith go right into the slot where the Steelers are really missing a key piece can be huge for his ability to get open. And not only to mention that, even though the Steelers don't really need wide receiver, if Jack Smith proves that he's capable, capable of being a big time wide receiver in this league, you could always trade Deontay Johnson and get something worth of him before he heads into free agency again once his contract is over. So, that gives him two reasons why the Steelers should select Jack and Smith if he does fall. But once again, all depends if he does and if draft, draft experts and evaluators feel that him missing a large portion of time equals him falling. Just to give you some numbers now. Jackson Smith, he ran 83% of his routes from the slot in his career, so he could be really helpful to the Steelers. So, with the Steelers' second round draft pick, their third pick in this year's draft overall, I have them picking Emmanuel Forbes. Just in case if you don't know who Emmanuel Forbes is, he's a cornerback from Mississippi State. He's six feet tall, weighing in at 181 pounds. And for me, this is my huge pick for the Steelers, and this is a guy that I really like in this year's draft, based off all his skills. So, me just looking at his tape, from my own evaluation, I would say he's not more he's more of a lurker and more of an anticipator than he is a truly just lockdown cornerback. He is so good at anticipating throws that he would had the most interceptions as a cornerback in college this season, and that's something the Steelers are lacking. But adding Emmanuel Forbes, having them develop into the Pittsburgh Steelers system would be so huge. And the Steelers really need someone who could play like Emmanuel Forbes. So Forbes, he oftentimes showcases that he could be more physical and than his slender flame would have suggest. The Mississippi State cornerback has been able to contend at the catch point against every single taller opponent that he has gone up against. This year's draft has so many good cornerbacks, and Emmanuel Forbes right now isn't ranked as one of the top cornerbacks, so he could easily fall to the Steelers, and if he does, that's huge ability, because his coverage ability at the catch point is so nice, his hands are one of the best in college football, and also his reach and his length is so good. You might think the ball is going to go over his head, but him putting his arm up and his length is able to produce so many deflections, so many pass defense, so many interceptions that you wouldn't anticipate. Also, his press coverage skills is elite. Yes, the Steelers run more of a zone cover scheme and more of a laid back scheme having the cornerbacks off, but one area where the Steelers could really use Emmanuel Forbes is in that press coverage because the Steelers don't really have a press coverage quarterback, someone who's going to jam the wide receiver at the line, but that's something Emmanuel Forbes could bring to the team. And Emmanuel Forbes, just overall, is someone who I've been looking at for a while now and someone I feel as though the Steelers could draft. If the Steelers don't decide to go a cornerback in round one, finding someone of his skill and his development should be able to be a key piece to the Steelers in round two. Also, the Steelers have free agents at cornerback this season with Cameron Sutton. So, if they do lose him, they might need someone to come in and fill in for him. And that's what Emmanuel Forbes can do. And also, Levi Wallace, he's really the Steelers' only true outside cornerback. Yes, Cameron Sutton moved from slot to outside, but still, I believe Cameron Sutton is truly a slot cornerback. And also, a color Witherspoon. He barely even played this season, so he might be someone who the Steelers cut. And the Steelers lack depth at cornerback. Whenever someone gets injured, they always have to play like a fourth stringer, like James Pierre. But having Emmanuel Forbes come in behind Cameron Sutton if they do decide to re-sign him, 
And also, Levi Wallace could be huge for his development. And having Cameron Sutton be able to go back to the inside, if needed, is really a huge advantage for the Steelers. So Emmanuel Forbes in round two with the Steelers' third pick overall is something I would truly look at. So, overall, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting round one, pick 17, Broderick Jones, someone who the Steelers really need. Also round run with their second pick, Jackson smith Najiba. And in round two, with the Steelers' third pick overall, Emmanuel Forbes. So, right now I'm only doing a two-round mock draft until I get more scouting with the other guys. But, let me know down in the comments below, how do you feel about all these draft picks? And who would you pick in round one, round two, and wherever? Let me know down in the comments below, how do you feel about my draft picks and my selections? And do you think they would fit into the Steelers? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below as well. If you like Steelers content, analysis, and reports, like the video, turn on post notifications down below for this channel as well, so you get notified whenever I post the next Steelers video. Click the bell down below, and I'll see you guys all later. Till next time, I'm out. Peace. And one last thing. I want to be doing these mock drafts every two weeks, so look forward to the next one. Peace.